Right now on KSBY News, it took less than 30 seconds for two burglars to commit a crime. It was all caught on camera. We'll see how the incident unfolded. And months after the San Bernardino shooting massacre, legal claims are trickling in. Why a victim's family is suing the county. Plus our top story tonight, millions of people on the East Coast are buried in snow. We'll take a look at Winter Storm Jonas. KSBY News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for joining us for the News at 11. I'm Amanda Storrentino. At least 19 people have died as a monster winter storm batters over 70 million people along the East Coast. And the blizzard has shut down road, rail and air travel and high winds have caused massive power outages. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has our story from Washington. The first blizzard of 2016 has slowly died down after burying major East Coast cities in as much as three feet of snow. The storm shut down air, rail and highway travel. Now comes the recovery part, getting roads passable again. That's Keith Howard's job. Everybody's stuck. Everybody's trying to get out. Some people have patience. Some people don't have patience. But when you go through a neighborhood, you see everybody out coming outside clapping. Washington and New York City were buried, enjoyable for pandas, and children who sled down the U.S. Capitol lawn. And these snowboarders who couldn't get to a mountain. So what are we doing? Is it legal today? Pretty sure it's not legal. Pretty sure it's not legal. The blizzard slammed over 70 million people. Hundreds of thousands lost power. And now there's widespread flooding in New Jersey and other mid-Atlantic states. We have shelters open in every county in the state. They are ready to take people. Uh, and keep them warm and get them fed and all the rest. Many airport runways and roads will remain closed while plows try to move the snow. Officials are begging people to stay home. You go out on the road, all it takes is one car to get stuck, and now that road is not passable, and the plows can't, can't plow that road, and the situation quickly descends into chaos. A chaotic, historic, and record-breaking blizzard which many are now happy to see go. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Well, 10 states and the District of Columbia are under states of emergency this weekend. Well, back here on the Central Coast, the San Luis Obispo police are searching for two people who they say burglarized a local liquor store and stole an ATM. And the whole thing was caught on camera. Take a look at this. It happened at Cork and Bottle on Foothill Boulevard. The duo reportedly Pried open the front door, moved some things aside, and get this, ran off with an entire ATM machine. The entire crime took less than 30 seconds, and someone from across the street reportedly saw them run out of the business and called police. Police say they are looking for two people who were seen leaving in a blue pickup truck. They are still investigating this incident. Tonight, a man is recovering from injuries after police say he was brutally attacked in Isla Vista. It happened on the 6500th block of Sueno Road around 1.30 a.m. Officials say he was approached by several college-aged men. It was not immediately clear, though, if those men were UCSB students. The men accused the victim of assaulting a friend and then proceeded to attack the male victim. Officials say during the attack, the victim was choked for a long period of time with the scarf he was wearing. The victim was taken to a local hospital and the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information to contact their department. A man was rescued this morning in Santa Barbara County after Coast Guard crews say he was swept out to sea by a wave. Coast Guard officials say a man was fishing on some rocks when he was swept out to sea around 10:15 this morning at Halama Beach. The man's daughter was at the beach and immediately alerted authorities. Santa Barbara County Fire deployed a helicopter to help in the search. Crews were able to locate the man on shore. They say he was able to swim to shore and did not appear to have major injuries. Well, Santa Maria police say they have two suspected gang members in custody tonight. Police say they received a call about a man with a gun on the 500th block of South Blosser Road around 1.30 this morning. When police arrived, the two suspects ran and the police were able to catch up with them. 33-year-old Vincent Jess Romero of Lompoc and 24-year-old Angel Castro were taken into custody. Both were in possession of a loaded firearm and they are both facing felony charges, including criminal street gang enhancements. And charges have been filed against this Santa Maria gang member, 23-year-old Raymond Hernandez, for a stabbing that happened back in 2013. 
Police say Hernandez, along with two other suspects, assaulted and stabbed a Santa Maria resident. Yesterday, police charged Hernandez and he faces charges of assault with a deadly weapon with a criminal street gang enhancement. The other two suspects were both sentenced to state prison for their role in that attack and Hernandez is currently serving time at the Santa Barbara County Jail. And family members of a woman killed in the San Bernardino terror attack are seeking more than $200 million in damages from San Bernardino County. The family of 27-year-old Sierra Claiborne filed claims of negligence and wrongful death against the county on Thursday. They also say the county failed to provide a safe workplace and the county said yesterday that they will review that claim and act in the best interest of everyone involved. Claiborne was among 14 people killed in the December 2nd massacre. This is now the second family to file claims stemming from the shooting. And in news across the state, a search is underway for three male inmates who escaped from the Orange County Central Men's Jail in Santa Ana. It happened around 9 last night when prison officials discovered three of the inmates were unaccounted for. And police conducted a search of the Central Jail complex and the nearby Civic Center, but did not locate the three inmates. The men were last seen around 5 p.m. yesterday, and police believe they know how the inmates escaped, but are not disclosing that information at this time. All three inmates were in custody for violent crimes, some that include kidnapping, torture, burglary, and murder. Well, Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire former mayor of New York City, is reportedly considering a third-party bid for the presidency. The New York Times is reporting Bloomberg has told his advisors to draw up plans for a potential independent campaign in this year's race. The Times reports he has told friends he would be willing to spend at least $1 billion of his own money on his campaign. NBC News reports a source familiar with Bloomberg says the former mayor is serious about it. And coming up next on KSBY News, hundreds gathered for some tasty treats in a Tascadero. Coming up, we'll check out this year's first Tamale Festival. And Pismo Pier is reopened. Find out why officials closed it yesterday. You're watching KSBY News, the Central Coast's number one source for local news. You can now enjoy the waves from Pismo Pier again after the city of Pismo Beach announced today that they have reopened the pier. The pier was closed yesterday because of a large head-on wave and city officials say the closure wasn't necessarily because of worries of water on the pier, but a precautionary measure due to the damage strong waves can have on the pilings. And tamale lovers who are now happily fed after visiting the first annual tamale festival today at Atascadero Lake. This new event had activities for all your tamale needs, including a tamale contest for most popular tamale and judges' favorite tamale, and people also could taste test and vote for their favorite meal. Tamale chefs from across the county featured a variety of gourmet to spicy tamales, and some chefs even demonstrated how to make the very best homemade ones. Some people had a taste experience they never thought they would have. Walked around, saw all the vendors, and we went outside and just had an experience of fried tamales that I've never had fried tamales before. And I'm hungry now. Festival entertainment included dancing and a mariachi band, along with face painting and arts and crafts. Slow Maker Space held an open house party today to celebrate their move to a larger location downtown on Higuera Street. Slow Maker Space is a business that holds an open workshop and idea laboratory where members and students can come to make their projects and ideas into reality and also provides a space to share knowledge and discover new skills. This larger space will allow for more workshops, including classes, to learn how to use 3D printers, the laser cutter, CNC router, and other machines. If you're a creative person or if you've wanted to start projects, then this is the perfect place to come. Not only do we have the equipment that you can utilize to make just about anything you want, but we have people that you can learn from, and it's a really amazing collaborative community. In addition to this move to the new location, Slow Maker Space has started a collaboration with the Slow County Library, where library members can attend classes at the workshop. And coming up, we saw a dry day across the Central Coast. It's going to be a similar scene, actually, the next couple of days. Here's a look from San Luis Obispo earlier today. All of all the details on our forecast coming up after the break.
Well, welcome back. We're going to start off on the East Coast with this winter storm. Jonas, look right here. I want to stop it right here. That snowstorm. This is from the last 12 hours. This is when that brunt of that storm went through the East Coast, causing all of that snow. It's absolutely beautiful, but also very dangerous at the same time. New York saw over 25 inches of snow. DC 18 inches, Philadelphia over 22 inches. One city even in West Virginia saw up to 40 inches of snow. Incredible how much snow is going through there. But that low pressure system that brought all that snow with that cold front pushing into it, well, it's now moving out of the way. So the storm part is done, but it's the aftermath that we're now worried about. Very strong winds causing lots of power out for thousands and thousands of people across the East Coast tonight. Also, uh, very, that wind is being about 70 mile per hour gusts. Absolutely incredible. That's hurricane forces of wind. Snow, not so much there anymore, but also coastal flood advisory is also playing a factor over there. While it's so dangerous, some are also enjoying it. This is a picture I got from friends in Virginia of their pups Mimi and T-Bear enjoying that snow and a path made for them to have a little bit of fun outside. So for more pictures like that, go to my Twitter at A Star and Tino. But back here on the Central Coast, that rain we've been getting, making it absolutely gorgeous and green. Thank you, Trisha, for this photo of some green areas across the coast and Atascadero Lake seeing some rain. Thank you, Wesley, for that. That was right next to the Tamale Festival, so hopefully you got to enjoy the lake and some tamales today. Santa Maria tonight is at 49, Slow 53, Paso 48, Lompoc at 50, and Santa Barbara at 52 tonight. What we are looking at are some lows going in. Overnight around 7 a.m. tomorrow is when they're going to be pretty chilly, but it's going to boost right back up, giving you a very nice Sunday. What we're seeing is a high pressure system moving in by midweek. You can see it come right there, and as it makes its way into the central coast, we're going to be getting temperatures up to the 70s in January. A little bit different, but then it's going to move right back out by the end of the week, and we're going to have our temperatures going back down, but that also gives us a slight chance of rain as well. Current winds, though, that's the story that we're looking at. San Luis Obispo, 9 miles per hour. Paso 10, a lot more calm than we saw earlier today, but it is causing some advisories. You can see a high surf advisory giving us a large surf west and northwest facing beaches. This is nothing new, something we've been seeing a lot the past couple of weeks. But that wind advisory, Santa Barbara County, Ventura, Los Angeles, so if you're driving on the I-5 corridor, San Marcos Pass especially, 15 to 30 mile per hour winds, 40 to 45 mile per hour gusts, so be very careful out there. Possibly a couple sprinkles overnight, Otherwise, some cloudy skies for the rest of your weekend going into your work week. Clear skies. Next chance of rain won't be until the end of the week. But you can see by our long range pattern, there's a lot of systems up here. They're strong enough to make it into Northern California, but just not strong enough to make it over here on the Central Coast. And right here, you can see by our rain accumulation pattern, we're going to move right here. Northern California getting most of it. Coastal area is going to get a little bit of rain this week, but probably a tenth of an inch, if anything. Look at our microclimates for Sunday. Really nice day out. Going to be in the 60s across the central coast. Coastal areas will be a little bit more warm than those inland areas. You can see we're going to stay in the 60s along the coast. Inland uh, temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler in the 50s, but overall really nice days. Those lows remaining in the 40s, low 50s, but 63 in Avila, 62 Cayucas. Enjoy your Sunday free of rain. Santa Maria and Santa Barbara, cloudy skies. A little bit warmer than we have seen, 62, 64, but you can see that peak up in the middle of the week, 70, 69, 72. Warm temperatures, something we are not used to seeing at this time of the year in January. Paso and San Luis Obispo, 59 tomorrow, 64 in San Luis, so enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right, for more news and sports with Travis Clark, join us after the break. For him, just like we was ready to play for Black. Listen, I don't know if you guys have ever watched ice skating. But if you do it with Amanda Starantino, <laughs> that's the real deal. That's the real deal. I think that's been our night is uh, teaching Travis ice skating. And I'm surprised it wasn't in your show because you should have seen him when Gracie Gold. America's sweetheart. That Listen. great, clean, long program. Look. She was in tears. Travis was in tears. <laughs> it was a show at KSBY. You got to appreciate, no matter what someone's doing, you got to appreciate the, the athleticism. Yeah, you know, I mean, really, like, and I have no idea what they're doing, I'll admit it, but this girl doing the play-by-play, -play, so. Well, yeah, hopefully you got to catch it. Figure skating will also be on NBC tomorrow right here <laughs> on KSBY, <laughs> men's long program. Some great stuff out there. So excited, the All long right. program. Yes, look at oh. you. All right, well, we'll be right back. <laughs> 
All right, so the snow's pretty until you have to shovel it, but this New Jersey man found a way to make it fun out there on his hoverboard. The video has gone viral. We also noticed he has a banana sweatshirt on, yeah. so he's having lots of fun doing it, and it looks like by the video he got it done pretty fast, so a new way to shovel your deck. Lots of fun out there. That was quick. I, that's how I would do it. You just want to talk right. about ice skating more. No, but I do want to say you're going to have a really nice day tomorrow. Temperatures are looking good for so new, more news, weather, and sports. Head to KSBY.com. Good night.